one thing that I remember about my experience with cancel culture is how much it drained my soul. Now, that sounds like a pretty extreme analogy, but it's true. Cancel culture left me feeling empty inside. So I started to wonder, how could cancel culture advocates justify the practice knowing that it creates more problems as opposed to making a positive impact on society? But then again, maybe they don't know. And yes, this is also considering the one-off cases like Harvey Weinstein that I know many cancel culture advocates might use to defend the practice. But I'm an absolutist when it comes to anti-cancel culture in the same sense that I'm an absolutist when it comes to the First Amendment. I would rather people have the freedom to call me all kinds of nasty names, racist or not, up until threats of violence. Because I understand that censorship is a slippery slope towards government tyranny. And in terms of cancel culture, I believe that serious cases involving actual crimes should be handled through the courts because I understand that social justice can sometimes lead to false accusations and unfair treatment. I don't think a handful of warranted cancellations can justify cancel culture as a whole, especially when there isn't any set guidelines for canceling someone in the first place. And this is where a lot of people get boycotting and cancel culture confused. A boycott involves withdrawing your support from a person or entity, while cancel culture, on the other hand, might involve that plus other things like uh, bullying someone for an indefinite amount of time, contacting their place of employment, or publishing their personal information online for people to find. And because cancel culture doesn't have any set rules, it becomes the perfect cover for bad behavior because, well, there isn't anyone to hold the cancelers accountable, and why would they? Bullying isn't bullying if you're doing it for social justice, right? Wrong. <laughs> so let's talk about it. For a practice that doesn't have any set guidelines, rules, or leadership, what does accountability look like to the mob, and at what point is the cancellation considered successful? The truth is, nobody knows, because you'll get a different answer depending on who you ask, and that's the problem. Who are these people, and why do they seem to believe that they have authority over you? And to make it even more complicated, how do you satisfy a mob when there's multiple people assuming the role of an authority figure? Coming from someone who's been canceled multiple times for having various opinions, I can confidently say that if it were left up to the mob, my cancel culture punishment would have lasted indefinitely because I'm not gonna apologize for having an opinion. And when the mob doesn't get its way, it tends to embolden their behavior, which is why in my case, the harassment lasted for months. Admittedly, this experience put me in a deep state of depression, which is a common symptom that cancel culture victims report having. Like the recent situation revolving Chrissy Teigen after she received backlash for bullying people online. A quick glance on Twitter will show you how very little people seem to care about her mental health, which coincidentally was the same reaction that people had towards me when I also expressed the psychological trauma I endured as a result of cancel culture. People legitimately believed I was using my mental health as an excuse to evade accountability. Now remember, all I did was have a different opinion, and I don't think that warrants psychological trauma. But what about Chrissy? After all, she bullied people, right? No, I don't think an eye for an eye is the best course of action. Simply redirecting the abuse doesn't make it any better, and I'd argue that doing so actually outweighs the harm caused by the original event. To put it simply, the solution can't be worse than the problem. And because cancel culture doesn't have any rules, it usually does become worse than the problem. And that's a reality that cancel culture advocates refuse to acknowledge. In fact, when I've tried arguing this exact point, I've had people respond by saying, cancel culture doesn't exist. Or more specifically, that I was never canceled. Huh? Okay. Now, obviously, that's a lie, because I lost sponsorships and underwent a lot of therapy as a result. So what exactly is the mob looking for in order to consider someone canceled? Again, without having any set guidelines for cancel culture, it's kind of hard to get an answer to this question. So I can only speculate based on some of the comments that were directed at me. And just like Chrissy, the mob's focus always seems to be on material possessions. I once had someone tell me that because I owned expensive equipment, acquired new sponsorships, and have a large YouTube following, I was never canceled. 
But when you break all of those reasons down, the core message is that the mob believes I shouldn't have anything. I shouldn't own this microphone or this lighting that I saved up for in order to run my business as a content creator, or that I shouldn't be allowed to have sponsorships in order to pay my rent, or that I should just be ostracized from society and left without any support. Does that sound humane? And if it doesn't, does that sound like appropriate punishment for having an unpopular opinion? And what about Chrissy? I mean, she bullied teenagers online, so clearly she deserves it, right? Nope. I don't think she does. Will the mental abuse caused by her cancellation force her to change her behavior? Maybe. Will it undo the harm she caused from bullying? Not at all. But even if it did, I don't think the obsession with cancel culture is healthy for any of the parties involved. Because here's the other thing that happens and often without the canceler realizing it, it's that cancel culture starts to deplete you of empathy. Think about it. It becomes a mind game where your brain will try to justify bullying or targeted harassment because you've convinced yourself that what you're doing is for a good cause. It's very similar to how looters justified stealing from department stores after the George Floyd incident. That's not justice or protesting, that's theft. The second you find yourself justifying bad behavior, that's how you know your common sense has been compromised. And once you start excusing the mental abuse of another person, it's a sign that you're starting to lack empathy. Because what that means is depression, anxiety, or thoughts of suicide are only valid depending on your personal bias towards that individual. I don't think mental health is something that should be gatekeeped because let's say for the sake of this argument that Chrissy is faking her depression and anxiety just so the mob will leave her alone. Okay, so what? What's the big deal? Because realistically, I think the possible consequences of not taking her mental health seriously outweigh the consequences of her just faking it. And we've seen this play out with other case studies like Caroline Fleck, Alec Holoka, or Mike Adams, to name a few, who all committed suicide shortly after the mob came for them. Of course, there's no proof that they took their own life as a result of cancel culture, but I think this is a reasonable concern that people should consider, as well as what damage it does to conversations surrounding mental illness. There's already so many people struggling with their mental health, and I think we should consider what message the mob is sending to those who might already feel shameful about their potential diagnosis. If we normalize writing people off because we feel like they're faking it, they might be less inclined to ask for help. The other thing that cancel culture does to the cancelers is that it encourages encourages them to act out with their emotion instead of addressing those triggers. This is my main argument against political correctness, which I find to be very similar to cancel culture. It's this idea that certain words are harmful to people and therefore shouldn't be said. For example, if I were to say, I think fat people are gross, someone might use cancel culture to teach me a lesson because my comment upset them. But what happens when the canceling is done? Is that gonna stop all 7 billion people on this planet from ever expressing similar views? No, because that isn't realistic. I understand that the world is a diverse place with different opinions and beliefs that don't align with my own. So my options are to either freak out and seek accountability for those that make me feel bad, or accept the reality that mean people aren't going anywhere. This then forces me to work on my emotional discipline, so I'm only giving my attention to situations that are actually meaningful. Unfortunately, cancel culture enables emotional immaturity by essentially giving people a cheat code to solve their problems. What's the point of working on your own inner peace if you know you can lean on the mob to temporarily make you feel better until someone does it again? But there's one more thing that happens when these situations play out. What about the people watching? Those that don't get involved but witness the mob in action. What happens to them? Well, again, based on my own experience, some of them feel an overwhelming amount of guilt because they didn't oppose the mob or come to my defense, which isn't something anyone should feel guilty for because no one's obligated to be a hero. But the most insidious consequence is the fear that the mob places on its bystanders. It signals to them that if you step out of line and say the wrong thing, you will succumb to the same type of treatment. This in turn causes many people to self-censor out of fear of being canceled themselves. This slowly trains society into believing that only certain ideas are welcome. 
This means that little by little, it chips away at people's right to just be themselves. Just look at this recent tweet that I responded to where a mob went after someone's job for applauding a recent lightning strike that hit a George Floyd mural. Say what you want about the guy, but applauding a lightning strike isn't against the law. According to the mob, however, it's enough to get you fired. Now think about that for a second. What that means is this person doesn't have the choice to oppose that mural. And I've seen similar things happen to those who opposed Black Lives Matter or didn't vote in the way that the mob wanted them to vote. These are all examples that only scratch the surface of how cancel culture can be weaponized to control the masses. It's one of those things where many fail to recognize its dangers because the act of canceling someone rewards them with instant gratification. They feel like canceling is a good thing because it simulates some form of punishment. So they're not thinking about the long-term effects it can have on the individual or society as a whole. So what's the solution? If we know that canceling someone causes mental harm to the victim, the canceler, and those that are watching, what do we do? Well, I don't have all the answers, but I do have some suggestions. Before you cancel someone, ask yourself, will canceling this person actually solve the problem? This isn't to be confused with making you feel better. Will the act of canceling right their wrongs? If the answer is yes, ask yourself if you'd welcome thousands of angry strangers wielding pitchforks at your front door, because that's what the mob feels like. But maybe you answered no and the abuse isn't okay. So what are your options? Well, I think it's reasonable enough to block someone online if you don't want to see an opinion that you don't like. I realize that this isn't what people want to hear because harmful rhetoric shouldn't exist, but unfortunately, it does, and that's a part of life. You could also withdraw your support from the person if you choose, and no, you don't need to announce it to the world. If you're boycotting someone or something, why do you need to share it with everyone essentially signaling to the mob? Do you want to boycott? Or do you want the attention? I also think it's reasonable to allow the courts to handle serious cases instead of taking matters into your own hands. Yeah, it's not perfect, and yeah, sometimes bad people do get away, but I don't think the alternative of risking false accusations is a better option. Sometimes, the best thing to do is to do nothing at all, and realize that there are no true solutions in life, only trade-offs. It's a hard pill to swallow. But hey, that's going to be it for me, so let me know in the comments what you think about this video. Have you been canceled before? And how did it make you feel? And if you have a suggestion for a future video, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button for more. My name is Gothics, this is Right Now, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!